So I've got really good news. This is a simple tactic that for some reason people just don't do enough of, and it's one of those things I learned from Tim Schneibley, who's the coach of Sam Query, and it's brilliant, okay? So we got the sword and the shield. So imagine yourself for a second as a warrior, which as a tennis player, let's face it, that's pretty much what we are out here, right? Um, good, well-dressed warriors. <laughs> anyway, so as a warrior, you've got a sword and a shield, all right? And I want you to think of your sword as the shot that you want to hit when you're creating offense, all right? So for me, it's my forehand. If I'm playing a match and I want to win, uh, the only shot I'm really trying to hit most of the time is the forehand. If I hit a backhand, it's really to try and set myself up for a forehand. So what side is your sword on? Leave it in the comments below. I'm curious to read that. So imagine yourself playing a match and you've got your sword, which you know, let's say your sword is your forehand, all right? If, you're, if that is you, you're in good company because Federer, Nadal, uh, Bjorn Borg back in the day, they really tried to hit as many forehands as they could. In fact, I was watching a match yesterday, uh, 2009, Marat Safin uh, against Federer, I think in the Australian Open third round uh, with my wife. I geek out on stuff like this. I love to watch it. And there was a point in the second set where Safin was just like, why hit anything to Roger's forehand? And you can't blame him. So you saw him deliberately just take every shot he possibly could uh, at Federer's backhand. Federer eventually uh, outfoxed him and triumphed uh, like we know that he likes to do. So I want you to hit your sword against your opponent's shield as much as possible. Okay, so now you might be asking yourself, Ramon, shouldn't I develop my shield? Shouldn't I make my shield better? Absolutely. But if you're playing a match and you're playing to win, you want to hit your strongest shot, period, right? So you can bludgeon someone over the head with a shield, but why do that when you've got a sword handy? Makes perfect sense, right? Now, what do you do? If you're playing against somebody who has two swords, cheat as much as possible and uh, get yourself some new hitting partners. No, uh, just kidding. So you want to, if you're playing against somebody who's really good on both sides, then we try some other sneaky tactics that we'll talk about uh, in a future video. And if you're playing against the guy with two shields, which uh, a lot of people call the pusher, um, that's kind of a different animal too. And we're going to talk about what to do in depth uh, to a pusher in a future video. Now this is a bit oversimplified, but not too much. I mean, if you look at Roger and Rafa, the battles that they had over the years, one of the reasons Rafa was able to have so much success against Roger is because Rafa, his movement was so good, he could hit his forehand to Federer's backhand, which incidentally was Rafa's cross-court forehand, um, and really made Roger uncomfortable. So if you want to win more matches, just find out what side your sword is on, find out what side your opponent's shield is on, and then hit your sword to his shield as much as possible, and then do it some more. Thanks again for watching this video. I had a great time making it for you as I enjoy making every video for you. Coming up next, I got a video that YouTube says is something that you're really gonna wanna watch, which uh, Google is pretty smart, so I figure uh, we can trust them. So leave me a comment down below letting me know what side your sword is on and how you can use this knowledge to really go get your opponent next time. Please click the like button, share this with a friend who you know needs this advice, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss next week's lesson. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.